Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today um, I'm going to do a card and bookmark set and I'm going to do it in pen and ink and some wash. And uh, so first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just show you roughly what I'm doing and there's going to be a little poem involved. Just a quick glimpse there. Um, I'm going to first of all talk about the equipment that I'm going to use and then we'll get started pretty darn quick. So I've got here a piece of, um, this is Fabriano Artistico Hot Press. So it's nice and smooth, which means that it will take the um, pen work better than a very textured cold press paper. So that's what I've decided to use today. Now this piece is just about big enough for me to cut a bookmark off one end and then fold the other part in half to give me a card. And because it's a 140 pound watercolour paper, it's quite stiff and definitely stiff enough to use for a greetings card. Um, in order to do my um, uh, drawing on here, I'm going to use a calligraphy pen. Uh, this, these two here are by Speedball and um, I've had them for many years, but you can still buy the same thing on Amazon and they're not expensive at all. I think it's about 13 euro, uh, $13 for a set. Um, you may even get two holders in that set. I'm not quite sure now, actually, come to think of it, but um, it's not very expensive. comes with several different sized nibs. Um, some of which have this um, attachment and the video I did last, I wasn't quite sure what that was called, but um, it acts as a kind of reservoir. So it's called an ink reservoir, believe it or not. It's like having a little permanent ink well attached to your um, nib and um, actually means that it doesn't run out of ink very quickly and you can do a lot more drawing or writing before you have to refill your pen, which is quite handy. I know it sounds old fashioned and now we have these things here to use instead. Um, but, you know, they say that uh, there's no point in recycling and that is so true. I was just watching something on the news yesterday about how it costs more to send things to be recycled than it would be to just put them in landfill and then build a golf course on top of the landfill. There's an argument there, definitely. Um, Anyway, I feel increasingly uncomfortable with these because they don't last very long if you're using them a lot like me. And, you know, so you can use this kind of thing and it's fine, not problem at all. But I'm probably thinking about often now moving over to the more old fashioned and much more ecologically sound uh, alternatives. So that's me. And um, in the description below the video, there will be a link to that particular product. Um, and also, obviously, it'll be in my shop front on Amazon.com slash shop slash Diane Anton Studio, where you can find all the interesting things that I have come across in the last couple of years that I put on there as an aid memoir for me and also for um, you to uh, refer to if you want to um, get hold of anything that I've suggested you might like to use. Um, now, as for ink, I'm going to be using Sennelier ink here. This is again a fairly natural thing. It's not vegan. I'm not a vegan. This is okay by me. Sorry for those of you who don't approve of insects being used in the creation of this ink. Um, but, you know, that's what I'm going to use. I've got various different colours. They come in a set. You can buy a set of five or six on Amazon, again, for a reasonable price. This one's called Sanguine. It's a kind of red. Uh, this one is called Burnt Sienna, which goes without saying what that is. I've got Prussian Blue. Um, I've got uh, Sepia and also Walnut. So that's the darkest brown. And I'm probably going to use those to do the drawing. And then to colour it, here is my little palette that I used uh, 
in the last video I put up, which was an abstract. And these are Kiritaki colors that I took out of the um, box of um, paints and I've put them here. And we have, um, I think this is a kind of crimson, then we've got dark brown and various beiges and so on. And I'm going to use those to color the flowers. Waste not, want not. So let's get started, as they say in all the best videos. Uh, bookmark can be the width of my ruler, which is about an inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to lay that down there like that and I'll take my um, craft knife and I'm just going to cut that off before we go any further. And uh, I'm going to put that to one side and I'll do that at the end. I may or may not attach that to the video. Um, and then I need to fold this in half. And for that, I'm going to use my bone folder to help me fold it neatly. And this is nine and a half inches now uh, in length. So we're going to divide that in half. So half of nine is four and a half and half of a half is a quarter. So it's four and a half plus a quarter, four and three quarters. So that's four and three quarters. And four and three quarters. I'm seeing double there. Now, I don't know whether this paper has a right side and a wrong side. Um, I'm thinking it's probably this side is a little bit smoother. So um, I'm going to fold it this way. So let's put our uh, score mark. Well, it's not scoring, it's a crease mark, fold mark. Scoring would mean I was be cutting it, and I'm not cutting it with that bone folder and then I just fold it towards me like that. That gives you a neater edge on the outside if you fold it towards you. So I've creased it on this side and you can see there is a slight mark there but on the outside which is the bit that's going to be seen it's a nice clean fold. So we'll make the card in this orientation. If you feel it's a bit too long um, you could cut off a little bit more here, but I actually want it to be this slightly unusual size because I'm going to be writing something here and then putting um, a uh, floral design on the left there. So, so that's what we're going to do. And um, okay, now what I don't want to do is to get ink all over my paper before I've even started. So I'm going to move that away a bit and then I'll open these bottles Ugh, when I've had a quick slurp of coffee. We had a very heavy frost last night. Yesterday we had snow, or was that day before? Day before yesterday? Um, but yes, yesterday there was still snow on the ground. And uh, this morning we woke up to a lovely, wonderful sunset, uh, rise, <laughs> sunrise, bring me the morning, um, beautiful sunrise and a very heavy frost. So I've shut the dog outside actually in the frost because um, he needs some exercise. So he's outside, but I don't think he's going to get cold and keep an eye out. Feeding the birds, making sure they've got plenty because this time of year, January, February, February is the uh, feed the bird months, month, feed the birds month, um, apparently. Okay, now I need to concentrate. Um, let's find a piece of washi tape, just... just to uh, show me where my fold line is really. Uh, from there to there, just to show me where it is. Okay, so uh, let me see, here's my pen. And um, I'm going to do roughly what I did before, which is to, now when you're using a pen like this, you want to hold it not right down here, because that's that's what you need to do for, for when you're writing. But when you're um, 
drawing, I, th I think it's better for myself anyway, to hold it a little bit further away from the nib. And sorry for the state of my hands, I've already got ink on them. Um, so let's just start at random with something. And I'm going to allow the, the uh, ink to do whatever it wants to do, although that's probably a little bit too much of a good thing. Just suck some of that up. You know how it is. I should have just tried that out on a separate piece of paper first. It doesn't matter. And uh, so then I'm just going to draw leaves and flowers. And the idea is to just um, do random different colors of the ink. And I'm just doing five pointed flowers. Just the traditional And uh, let's have a blue one here. The idea is to have a sort of vintage look and to have different size flowers and uh, make them really, really, um, what's the word, uh, messy, could say. thing is, when you're painting, you never get the same effect twice. I mean, I'm using a different paper here from what I used for my try out. And uh, it's not working in exactly the same way. So this is the thing, you try to copy something and it doesn't. When you, if you try to um, copy what I do and it doesn't turn out the way mine did, don't, for goodness sake, blame yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm not as good as she is, because you are. You just aren't me. <laughs> Lucky you. Um, so what you do is bound to reflect your personality. And, you know, it's only a certain kind of personality that either can or wants to copy other people's work. And that's considered to be not artistic. And that's that's why sometimes I say I'm not an artist because I know full well that I don't paint from my heart all the time. Sometimes I do, and um, sometimes I don't. And sometimes, um, well, and that, that means that, that sometimes I'm an artist, I suppose, and sometimes I'm not. But uh, whatever you do, for goodness sake, don't... Please think that, you know, and, as, and this, isn't, this isn't a work of art. This is just a scribble. This is something to pass the time, isn't it? And um, I think I might switch to a little bit of pink here. I can't even copy myself. The, the one I did the other day, isn't, this isn't going to turn out exactly the same. I was really quite pleased with it. I thought, oh. Yes, and see, I'm going to write a bit of um, a poem up here. I don't know if you've heard of E. E. Cummings, um, the poet that uh, doesn't use any punctuation. I don't even know if it's a man or a woman. I think it's a woman, E. E. Cummings. Somebody will tell me, I know. I'm not an expert in poetry. 
Um, but anyway, she has this, or he has this poem, which is very short, and it goes, I do not know what it is about you that closes and opens. Only something in me understands the voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses. And I think that is incredibly beautiful and it has a particular meaning for me, which goes back to my youth. Um, so always associate that with Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd write it on here in my scrimpy, scrappy writing that is not particularly aesthetically pleasing, but, you know, whatever. And I think I'm getting towards the end here of this thing that I'm doing, this one that i done earlier. Um, yeah. Ramble on, rambling rose. Um, why I need you, no one knows. How I love you, no one knows. Why you wonder, no one goes. Uh, okay, that's not exactly what I would call brilliant there. But I'm going to try to... I'll probably go over it with a bit of white and it won't matter. And then I'll get my paint. Yes, maybe I'll go over that with a bit of white. And it won't look too bad then. Let that dry. There's always a mistake somewhere, isn't there? And it would be right at the top and at the beginning. If I hadn't been doing this on camera, I would have started again. Okay, so let's pick up a little bit of pink. And the, the ink is still slightly damp. So I'm just putting a little bit of colour. That one's probably wet. I can probably make that one go blue just by whooshing into the ink. And uh, off my palette, I'm just going to get a little bit of um, greenish for the leaves. Quite um, relaxing and meditative sort of thing you don't need to worry too much about this is what you call vintage isn't it vintage looking and uh, I took a photocopy of the one that I did earlier and um, I thought that would be quite nice in my um, junk journal or as they're calling them now not junk journals they seem to have gone away from that term uh, and now I think they're calling them what was it Smash books. Yeah. Oh well. A little bit more green in the leaves. And you come back with a second layer. Now it's dry. And that's a bud up there, I think. And put a little bit more colour in. Something like that. And then I'm going to draw right the words, the words, and let's do it in walnut, shall we? This is not going to be a calligraphic work of art. Uh, 
I do not know. what it is. about you that opens and closes only something in me understands and if you've ever been violently in love, you'll know what this means. The voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses. Eat, eat. Cummings. There we are. And uh, the imperfection of the drawing reflects the imperfection of love and the poem, which has no punctuation. So there's that. And then we have to do the bookmark. Which is going to be the same sort of thing. Only I'm going to do it just slightly differently. I think that card is a kind of homage, if you know what I mean. I'm going to take the pen, the brush. I don't know why I keep wanting to call my brush a pen, and I'm just going to let the ink run like that. So I'm not using any paint, just coloring them with themselves. And then pick up a little bit of green very soft green, very invisible green from my palette. And um, let's do another blue one down here. And another one down here. Some red ones here, just kind of a little bit more in the background. And then back to brown.
Uh, and uh, maybe, oh yes, let's do the wetting. I've been looking at new books to recommend to you on creativity and I've added about another seven or eight books to the shop to the um, on my bookshelf on Amazon. Amazon.com slash shop slash Diane Anton uh, uh, studio. And when you go there, you'll see different um, uh, pages. And one of them is called from, uh, from my bookshelf or on my bookshelf, I think I called it. And um, there you'll find various different books. Some of them are very old and they're books that I used when I was learning to paint years ago and which I got a lot out of. Some of them are really new. And there's a few there by people like um, someone called Dory Cantor, Art Escapes. Um, then there's a, a really good book by Nita Leland or Leland, I'm not sure. Nita Leland, she's been around an awful long, she's 89 now, um, but brilliant artist and a brilliant teacher. And I've got one of her books, which is called Exploring Colour. But I'm thinking I'm tempted to get this other one called New Creative. Well, she wrote The Creative Artist some years ago. And um, uh, now a few years back, so she wrote that quite a few years ago. And then a few years back, she did a, a revision of it. And it was called The New Creative Artist. And I think I'd quite like to get hold of that. And then there's another one called Soul Colour by someone called Emma Burley. And all three of those look quite interesting. I'm going to try and get hold of them. Okay, I think that will probably do. Make that a little bit darker there, perhaps. We could put some dots. Dots often make things look a little bit more finished, don't they? But I think I'm going to leave that like that. So, um, yeah, don't forget to um, take a look at Patreon, take a look at uh, membership, and um, take a look at our website. It's going to be changed again. We're going to be revising it, and soon we'll have a search button on there too. So there we are. I do not know what it is about you that opens and closes. Only something in me understands. The voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses by E.E. E. Cummings card and bookmark. I'll let you go now and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.